Metroid Prime is a first-person action-adventure game developed by Retro Studios and Nintendo for the GameCube video game console. It was released in North America on November 17, 2002, and in Japan and Europe the following year. Metroid Prime is the fifth main installment in the Metroid series, and the first Metroid game to use 3D computer graphics. Because exploration takes precedence over combat, Nintendo classifies the game as a first-person adventure rather than a first-person shooter. On the same day as its North American release, Nintendo also released the Game Boy Advance game Metroid Fusion, marking the return of the Metroid series after an eight-year hiatus following Super Metroid 1994. .Metroid Prime is the first of the three-part Prime storyline, which takes place between the original Metroid and Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Like previous games in the series, Metroid Prime has a science fiction setting in which players control the bounty hunter Samus Aran. The story follows Samus as she battles the space pirates and their biological experiments on the planet Talon IV. The game was a collaboration between Retro's staff in Austin, Texas, and Japanese Nintendo employees, including producer Shigeru Miyamoto, who suggested the project after visiting Retro's headquarters in 2000. The game garnered critical praise and commercial success, selling more than a million units in North America alone. It won a number of Game of the Year awards, and it is considered by many critics and gamers to be one of the greatest video games ever made, remaining one of the highest rated games on Metacritic. In 2009, an enhanced version was released for the Wii as a standalone game in Japan, and as part of the Metroid Prime Trilogy compilation internationally. Synopsis Background and setting Metroid Prime is the first of the three-part Prime storyline. Retro Studios wrote an extensive storyline for Metroid Prime, which was considered a major difference from previous Metroid games. Short cutscenes appear before important battles, and a scanner in the heads up display extracts backstory related information from objects. The Prime Trilogy is set between the events of Metroid and Metroid 2, but according to some sources, including Brazil's former Nintendo distributor Gradiente and the Nintendo Power Comics adaptation of Metroid Prime, the events in the Prime games occur after Super Metroid. The Brazilian publicity states that the Fazan Meteor is a piece of Zebes, which was destroyed after Super Metroid. However, one of the logbook entries from Metroid Prime 3, Corruption reveals that the meteor was a Leviathan from the planet Foz. The game takes place on the planet Talon IV, formerly inhabited by the Chozo race. Five decades before the game's events, the Chozo race fell after a meteor crashed onto Talon IV. This meteor contaminated the planet with a corruptive, mutagenic substance that the space pirates later named Fazan, and also brought with it a creature known to the Chozo as the Worm", a large containment field emitter of the "...artifact temple", in the Talon overworld area was designed as a seal to the meteor's energies and influence within the crater where it landed, which the space pirates attempt to disable or bypass in order to gain better access in order to extract the phasin. The containment field is controlled by twelve Chozo artifacts that are scattered around the planet. The player assumes the role of the bounty hunter Samus Aran, who receives a distress signal from the space pirate frigate Orpheon and travels to Talon IV to investigate and stop the space pirate activity she found. Her investigation leads her to stop the space pirates from exploiting Fazan and stop the spread of Fazan on Talon IV. <laughs> Plot Samus intercepts a distress signal from the space pirate frigate Orpheon, whose crew have been slaughtered by the pirate's own genetically modified, experimental subjects. At the ship's core, she battles with the Parasite Queen—a giant version of the tiny parasites aboard the ship. The Parasite Queen is defeated and falls into the ship's reactor core, initiating the destruction of the ship. While Samus is escaping from the doomed frigate, she encounters a cybernetic version of Ridley called Meta Ridley. During her escape, an electrical surge and explosion damages her Varia suit, which reverts to her original power suit. Samus escapes the frigate and chases her nemesis in her gunship towards the nearby planet Talon IV. Samus initially lands on Talon IV at a rainforest location referred to as Talon Overworld. 
After a brief period of exploring, she discovers the Chozo ruins, the remains of the Chozo civilization. After further investigation, Samus learns that many years ago, the planet was struck by a meteor, which carried with it a substance the Chozo call the Great Poison, commonly known as Phazon. The meteor also contained a creature called the Worm. The Chozo built an artifact temple over the crater to contain the Worm and to stop the Phazon from spreading over the planet. The temple's sealed entrance is controlled by twelve Chozo artifacts, which must be found to gain access to the crater. After re-obtaining the Varia suit in the ruins, Samus finds her way to the Magmore Caverns, a series of magma-filled underground tunnels, which are used by the Space Pirates as a source of geothermal power and connect the game's areas together. Following the tunnels, Samus travels to the Fendrana Drifts, a cold, mountainous location which is home to an ancient Chozo ruin and space pirate research labs used to study metroids, as well as ice caves and valleys home to electrical and ice creatures. After obtaining the gravity suit in Fendrana, Samus explores the interior of the crashed Orpheon, then infiltrates the Phazon Mines—the mining and research complex which is the center of the Space Pirates' Talon IV operations. Here she battles Phazon enhanced space pirates and obtains the Phazon suit after defeating the monstrous, Phazon mutated Omega Pirate. During her exploration of Talon IV, Samus finds the Twelve Keys to the Artifact Temple and lore recorded by the Chozo and the Space Pirates, providing insight into the history of the planet and the two races' colonization of it. As Samus puts the final key in place, Meta Ridley appears and attacks her. Samus defeats him with help from the temple's defensive artillery. The Chozo artifacts and Phazon suit allow Samus to enter the Impact Crater, where she finds the so-called Worm Metroid Prime, the source of the Phazon on Talon IV. After she defeats it, all the Phazon on Talon IV disappears, but Metroid Prime itself absorbs Samus's Phazon suit in a final effort to survive, reverting her armor to the gravity suit. Samus escapes the collapsing crater and leaves Talon IV in her ship. In a post-credits scene, only viewable if the player has collected all of the items, Metroid Prime uses the Phazon suit to construct a new body, becoming the entity known in future sequels as Dark Samus. <laughs> Gameplay As in previous Metroid games, Metroid Prime takes place in a large, open-ended world in which regions are connected by elevators. Each region has a set of rooms separated by doors that can be opened with a shot from the correct beam. The gameplay involves solving puzzles to reveal secrets, platform jumping, and shooting foes with the help of a «lock-on» mechanism that allows circle strafing while staying aimed at the enemy. Metroid Prime is the first game in the Metroid series to use a first-person view instead of side-scrolling, except in Morph Ball mode, when Samus' suit transforms into an armored ball and the game uses a third-person camera. The protagonist, Samus Aran, must travel through the world of Talon IV searching for 12 Chozo artifacts that will open the path to the Phazon Meteor Impact Crater, while collecting power-ups that let her reach new areas. The Varia suit, for example, protects Samus' armor against high temperatures, allowing her to enter volcanic regions. Some items are obtained after boss fights. Items must be collected in a specific order, for example, players cannot access certain areas until they find a certain beam to open doors, or discover new ordnance with which to beat bosses. Like the rest of the series, players are incentivized to explore to find upgrades such as ammunition packs and extra health. The heads up display, which simulates the inside of Samus' helmet, features a radar display, a map, ammunition for missiles, a health meter, a danger meter for negotiating hazardous landscape or materials, and a health bar and name display for bosses. The display can be altered by exchanging visors, one uses thermal imaging, another has X-ray vision, and another features a scanner that searches for enemy weaknesses and interfaces with mechanisms such as force fields and elevators. Metroid Prime introduces a hint system that provides the player with clues about ways to progress through the game. <laughs> Items. Throughout the game, players must find and collect items that improve Samus's arsenal and suit, including weapons, armor upgrades for Samus's power suit and items that grant abilities—including the Morph Ball, which allows Samus to compress herself into a ball in order to roll into narrow passages and drop energy bombs, and the Grapple Beam, which works by latching onto special hooks called Grapple Points, allowing Samus to swing across gaps. 
Unlike those in earlier games in the series, the beam weapons in Metroid Prime have no stacking ability, in which the traits of each beam merge. Instead, the player must cycle the four beam weapons, there are charge combos with radically different effects for each. Other upgrades include boots that allow Samus to double jump and a spider ball upgrade that allows her to climb magnetic rails. Items from previous Metroid games appear with altered functions. Art galleries and different endings are unlockable if the player collects a high percentage of items and scan visor logs. Prime is one of the first Metroid games to address the reason Samus does not start with power ups acquired in previous games. She begins the game with some upgrades, including the Varia suit, missiles, and grapple beam, but they are lost during an explosion on the space pirate frigate Orpheon. The producers stated that starting with some power ups was a way to give the player different things to do. And to learn the functions of these items before settling into the core gameplay, players can gain two features by connecting Prime with Metroid Fusion using a GameCube, Game Boy Advance link cable, cosmetic use of the Fusion suit that Samus wears in Fusion and the ability to play the original Metroid. Topic development According to producer Shigeru Miyamoto, Nintendo did not develop a Metroid game for the Nintendo 64 as Nintendo couldn't come out with any concrete ideas. Metroid co-creator Yoshio Sakamoto said he could not imagine how the N64 controller could be used to control Samus. Nintendo approached another company to make an N64 Metroid, but the offer was declined, supposedly because the developers thought they could not equal Super Metroid. Metroid Prime was a collaboration between Nintendo EAD and R&D1 and the American company Retro Studios. Retro was created in 1998 by an alliance between Nintendo and Iguana Entertainment founder Jeff Spangenberg. The studio would create games for the forthcoming GameCube targeted at a mature demographic. After establishing its offices in Austin, Texas in 1999, Retro worked on four GameCube projects. When Miyamoto visited Retro in 2000, he suggested a new Metroid game after seeing their prototype first-person shooter engine. In 2000 and early 2001, four games in development at Retro were cancelled, including an RPG, Raven Blade, leaving Prime the only game in development. During the last nine months of development, Retro's staff worked 80 to 100 hour weeks to reach Nintendo's deadline. Nintendo created the music, Retro handled art and engineering, and both teams worked on the overall design. The Japanese crew, which included producers Miyamoto, Kensuke Tanabe, Kenji Miki and designer and Metroid co-creator Sakamoto, communicated with Retro through emails, telephone conferences and personal gatherings. The game was planned to use a third-person perspective, but after Miyamoto intervened this was changed to first-person perspective and almost everything already developed was scrapped. The change was prompted by camera problems experienced by Rare, which was developing the N64 game Jet Force Gemini. According to director Mark Pacini, Miyamoto felt that shooting in third person was not very intuitive. Pacini also said that exploration is easier using first person. Pacini said that after picking that perspective, the crew decided not to make a traditional first person shooter. He said, We weren't trying to fit in that genre. We had to break down the stereotypes of what a first person game is and make a fun Metroid game. Pacini stated that Retro tried to design the game so that the only difficult parts would be boss battles and players would not be afraid to explore because the challenge of the game was finding your way around. Senior designer Mike Wicken said that the focus on exploration led the team to spend time making the platform jumping approachable to the player, and to ensure the gameplay had shooting as a very important, though secondary, consideration. Retro developed the storyline under the supervision of Yoshio Sakamoto, who verified that the ideas were consistent with the lore of the earlier games. The developers intended that Kraid, a boss from Metroid and Super Metroid, would appear in Prime, and designer Gene Kohler modeled and skinned him for that purpose, but he was cut for time reasons. The team considered implementing the speed booster power-up from Super Metroid but concluded it would not work well because of the first-person perspective and limitations imposed by the scale of our environment. The first public appearance of the game was a 10-second video at Spaceworld 2000. In November of the same year, Retro Studios confirmed its involvement with the game in the job application part of its website. In February 2001, the game was confirmed by Nintendo, which also announced that because of its emphasis on exploration and despite the first-person perspective, Metroid Prime would be a first-person adventure rather than a first-person shooter. 
In May 2001, the game was showcased at E3 2001, with its title confirmed as Metroid Prime. Topic audio Kenji Yamamoto, assisted by Kuchi Kuma, composed the music for Prime. The soundtrack contains arrangements of tracks from previous games in the series because Yamamoto wanted to satisfy old Metroid fans. It's like a present for them, he said. The initial Talon Overworld theme is a reinterpretation of Metroid's Brinstar theme. The music heard in Magmore Caverns is a new version of the music from Super Metroid's Lower Norfair area, and the music heard during the fight with Meta Ridley is a fast paced reimagining of the Ridley boss music first featured in Super Metroid, which has reappeared in most Metroid games since. Tommy Talariko Studios initially provided sound effects for the game, but Shigeru Miyamoto thought they were not yet good enough for an extended presentation at Spaceworld 2001. The game supports Dolby Pro Logic 2 setups and can be played in surround sound. The official soundtrack to the game was released on an album called Metroid Prime and Fusion Original Soundtracks, which was published by Cytron on June 18, 2003. Topic. Versions Prime was released for the GameCube in five versions. The original North American and Japanese NTSC versions and the second North American version, which contained minor changes, all used a loader that sometimes caused the game to freeze in specific rooms. The European PAL version resolved these glitches and contained altered elements of the gameplay to prevent sequence breaking, a slower loader that prevented the occasional crashes, slightly different story details, and narration in the opening and closing scenes. Some of these changes were carried over from the PAL version to the NTSC region's player's choice re-release, along with additional changes not made in other releases. This version, which was bundled with a silver GameCube, also contained a second disc featuring a preview trailer and a demo for Metroid Prime 2, Echoes, a timeline of Metroid games, and an art gallery. Metroid Prime was re released in Japan in 2009 for the Wii as part of the new Play Control series. It has improved controls that use the Wii Remote's pointing functionality. The credit system from Metroid Prime 3, Corruption is also included to unlock the original bonus content and the ability to take snapshots of gameplay. Internationally, the Wii version was released in Metroid Prime, Trilogy, a single disc compilation containing Prime, Echoes, and Corruption for Wii. On January 29, 2015, the compilation became available for download from the Wii U's Nintendo eShop. Reception Metroid Prime became one of the best-selling games on the GameCube. It was the second best-selling game of November 2002 in North America, behind Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, 250,000 units were sold in the first week of its release. As of July 2006, the game had sold more than 1.49 million copies in the US alone, and had earned more than $50 million. It was also the eighth best-selling GameCube game in Australia. More than 78,000 copies were sold in Japan, and Nintendo added the game to its player's choice line in the PAL region. Metroid Prime was met with critical acclaim. Electronic Gaming Monthly awarded the game a perfect review score. It won numerous Game of the Year awards and was praised for its detailed graphics, special effects, varied environments, moody soundtrack and sound effects, level design, immersive atmosphere and innovative gameplay centered on exploration in contrast with action games such as Halo, while staying faithful to the Metroid formula. Criticisms included the unusual control scheme, lack of focus on the story, and repetitive backtracking. Game Informer considered the control scheme awkward. Entertainment Weekly compared the game to a 1990s arcade game, filled with over the top battle sequences, spectacular visual effects and a pretty weak plot. And GamePro stated that inexperienced players might find it exhausting to keep revisiting the same old places over and over and over. In 2004, the video game countdown show Filter said Metroid Prime had the best graphics of all time. Metroid Prime appeared on several lists of best games. It was ranked 23rd in IGN's Top 100, 29th in a 100 game list chosen by GameFAQ users, and 10th in Nintendo Power's Top 200 Nintendo Games Ever. IGN named Metroid Prime the best GameCube game, while GameSpy ranked it third in a similar list, behind The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker and Resident Evil 4. 
Nintendo Power also ranked Metroid Prime as the sixth best game of the 2000s. Wired ranked the game 10th in its list of the 15 most influential games of the decade for popularizing exploration, puzzle solving, platforming and story among first person shooters, saying that the game was breaking the genre free from the clutches of doom. Wired's writer continued this GameCube title took one massive stride forward for first person games. Metroid Prime also became popular among players for speedrunning, specialized communities were formed to share these speedruns. Franchise and other media After Metroid Prime, three more games in the first person perspective and a pinball spin off were released. The sequel Metroid Prime 2, Echoes, in which Samus travels to planet Aether and discovers that a Phazon meteor crashed there, creating an alternate reality, and Samus fights a mysterious enemy called Dark Samus, was released in November 2004 for the GameCube. It was followed by Metroid Prime Pinball, a spin-off game featuring the locations and bosses of Metroid Prime, developed by Fuse Games and released in 2005 for the Nintendo DS. The next game released was Metroid Prime: Hunters for the Nintendo DS. Its storyline takes place between the events of Prime and Echoes. A demo of the game, titled Metroid Prime: Hunters First Hunt, was bundled with the Nintendo DS, and the full game was released on March 20, 2006, in North America and May 5, 2006, in Europe. In its narrative, Samus tries to discover an ultimate power while facing six rival bounty hunters. Hunters was not developed by Retro Studios, but by Nintendo's Redmond-based subsidiary Nintendo Software Technology. The game contains more first-person shooter aspects than Prime and Echoes, with removal of assisted aiming, more action-oriented gameplay, and various multiplayer modes. Metroid Prime's second full sequel is Metroid Prime 3: Corruption, which closes the Prime series. It was released on August 27, 2007, for the Wii console. In Corruption's story, Samus is corrupted by Fazin after being attacked by Dark Samus, who has become the leader of a space pirate group and is sending Fazin seeds to corrupt planets. Corruption's gameplay differs from that of Prime and Echoes, the assisted aiming is replaced with free aiming with the Wii Remote, and the interchangeable beams are replaced with a stackable upgrade system. A fourth game in the series, Metroid Prime 4, was announced at Nintendo's E3 2017 Spotlight livestream, and is currently under development for the Nintendo Switch. However, the game will be handled by an entirely new development team overseen by series producer Kensuke Tanabe, instead of Retro Studios. Eurogamer reported in February 2018 that Bandai Namco Singapore are working on the game alongside Nintendo and that the project includes some staff members who worked on the cancelled Star Wars 1313 game. Elements of Metroid Prime have appeared in other games, such as Super Smash Bros. Brawl, in which the frigate Orpheon is a playable stage, featuring the Parasite Queen in the background and several music tracks from Metroid Prime as background music. Metroid Prime's style of gameplay and HUDs also influenced and was compared to later first-person shooters, such as Geist and Star Wars, Republic Commando. <laughs> 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 Metroid Prime 